We are ready to go. So first thing first, we're going to show you the, uh, the laser. Um, and as I mentioned, it's, it's got a very small footprint. It's, it's hard to even call it a footprint. The whole laser is in this little box, which is like a little mini suitcase. Uh, it's small enough you could even take it on a plane and put it up above your seat. Um, this is the actual uh, treatment. Um, this is how we deliver treatment. There are a couple of different uh, spot sizes on it, but when we're treating the, um, the area for facial rejuvenation, we use the largest area. You can control the energy from this little piece here. They have this, um, this little booklet um, which really tells you everything you need to know about different treatment parameters, whether you're using uh, acne treatments, uh, facial rejuvenation, lentigines, hemoglobin. Um, it, it's just very simple, very easy to use. Uh, and we're going to cover her eyes, yeah. So it's an NDAG wavelength. We want to make sure to cover her eyes. So. And I have it set um, uh, at an energy mode of six. Okay, so these modes uh, apply to different fluences. Uh, the frequency, how fast it's firing, is set at one and a half, uh, and it's in the microsecond domain. So here we go. And so I tend to cover the whole area usually twice. And this is completely comfortable treatment. Patient, you know, She's had no topical anesthetic, no local anesthetic. Um, I think it's fair to say she's pretty comfortable. Uh, if she has some dark areas, there's some dark haired areas that will help those as well. And then once I get done with all of this, uh, we're going to go back and treat um, a telangiectasia on her nose and a solar lentigo on her forehead. How are you doing? Good. See how it's such a simple, easy treatment with such so many different diverse modalities of treatment available with it. And so she doesn't have, you know, we talk about the one-third, two-third um, upper lip to lower lip. So her upper lip is a little bit involuted, and this will actually give her a little bit of a lift as well as improving the quality of her skin. It doesn't get much easier than this. And as I said, I'll combine this with peels, I'll combine this with uh, botulinum toxin neuromodulators, I'll combine this with fillers. Uh, there are really a lot of other things we can do with this. Um, you're going to see us do Thermitite later. I've done this on someone's face and done Thermitite uh, on their skin, on, on their neck at the same time. Um, you're going to see us do Eclipse PRP. I've combined this with PRP on the same day. Uh, you can really do all these things together. Uh, and the last treatment you're going to see today is the uh, <clears throat> Cyton Diva device for vaginal rejuvenation. I'm not going to be combining that with this. Do we have any questions out there? So one of the things that you can see, you can't So really I've gone over this a couple times, which is what I usually do. There are really no discrete endpoints. I just want to cover the whole area. She's not getting red at all. And frankly, it's so gentle. If I hit an area two, three, four times, uh, it's not going to cause any problem at all. All right, so that's the neocollagenesis. I use the 1064 nanometer wavelength um, with the 650 microsecond pulse duration. And all I'm doing is I'm targeting water in her skin. I'm heating up the water. That will lead to new collagen formation. That will lead to improved skin toning. She may get a little bit of a lift in her upper lip. And overall, her color will be better. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to treat the uh, telangiectasia on her nose. And we use a much smaller spot size for this because we're trying to um, get the fluence up and target a specific area. So same device, same wavelength, same everything, just smaller spot size. So all he's doing is adjusting out the lens. So there's yeah. 
there's three different lenses here. So this one is a, what's, what's happening here, before he was using a six millimeter spot, uh, a collimated laser beam, so he can, you know, really, does, the distance isn't so relevant. Um, but now that he's using a focused laser, uh, uh, lens, uh, there's a, a spacer there that's specifically designed so you know exactly what fluence is actually being delivered to the skin. Great, okay. All right, so, um, got a nice Heaney aiming beam. I've got the spacer where I want it, right onto her skin, and I'm gonna fire. And you're not gonna see purpura from this generally. You might get a little bit of a blanch, and voila, that's really all it is. And I've done this one treatment, I've done it up to three, um, and pretty much all I'm doing is getting a little vasoconstriction, and I'm done. Um, and so that's treating the telangiectasia. And you can really approach a Sola Lentigo. Uh, in the office, I call them experience spots. We never call them age spots. Not to worry, you are not aged. Um, and it's really the same approach, except the difference is, uh, much like you might with an IPL, uh, the goal is to get some darkening um, of, of the Lentigo. And so I'm going to hit this several times. Again, the same distance with the spacers. And she feels that a little bit, because it's a much higher fluence. No surprise. And it's a tad darker. I don't know if you can see, but I can. And that's the treatment. Um, so it's a pretty simple thing. And if she had dark hair, I could treat that. Um, I can, like I said, make, give her neocollagenesis. I can treat lentigenes, telangiectasias. And if she had acne, which she doesn't have, but it's a terrific approach to acne. Any more questions um, before we go on to our uh, next treatment? We're getting there. So there, the, the question is about uh, packaging peels with this treatment, or okay. PRP? So. All right, so, so both of them um, can, are, and we do them with this. Um, you know, I generally do the, um, uh, the laser treatment first, uh, because that gives me the depth that I want, and then I'll do a peel, because if I do the peel first, uh, the energy from the wavelength uh, will be blocked by whatever action the peel does. Uh, and I, I, you know, technically, PRP could be done before or after. Generally, I do everything after the laser treatment. But there's absolutely no reason not to do them at the same time, and we do it all the time. And my name's Luann from Connecticut. Two questions. The first one is, how does this work on poikiloderma? And the second question is, for solar elastosis, would you rather use this over uh, maybe a fractionated RF or some other device? Okay, so the first question was, say that again, what was your first question? <laughs> oh, poikiloderma, yes. All right, so, you know, poikiloderma, think about what that is. It's got a variety of reds and browns. Um, and so this is an ideal treatment approach for that because it's gonna target both of those uh, chromophores, so it easily can be used for that. In terms of solar elastosis, you know, this gets back to the fact that, you know, I look at this as producing the effect of a non-ablative fractional device. Um, you know, obviously, if you're doing a fractional ablative device, much more aggressive, more downtime, you're gonna get more collagen improvement because you're creating more of a wound. But if you look at this as a non-ablative fractional approach, add PRP to it, the results are terrific. So, so, David, go back to the poikiloderma question. Yeah. So, when would you choose this device and when would you choose an IPL for poikiloderma? Ha, okay. So, if you have them both in the same office, obviously, if you don't have an IPL, you're going to use this. If you have them both in the same office, um, they're both going to work. There's no question about it. This thing goes so fast. That's, you know, one positive. And you saw when I, when I was treating her, there's almost no discomfort. I find when I use IPLs at effective fluences on the neck, I have to use numbing cream.